right good day everybody and welcome to the channel i hope you're all having a great day so i am currently off to the town center i'm gonna go and meet a friend and i've got to go and pick up some birthday presents i've got to get a birthday present for both my little brothers and my little sister because they all bloody come around at the same time which is shite so i thought today i would give my thoughts on this sony x1000v um i think i've put plenty of uh, plenty of hours through it now and plenty of uh, riding hours through it and editing hours to be able to actually give my thoughts on it anyway a de decent comparison against other popular brands uh, so the first thing I noticed about it when I took it out of the package is it's light it is very very light um, having it on my helmet it sticks out a little bit more than the drift goes desk um, but that's not because it's bigger that's just because of the way I decided to have it on the helmet I shoot in 4K and have it pointing slightly out so I can correct the distortion so my helmet is not in view. Otherwise, if I if I don't correct the distortion, my helmet's slightly in view. How you see with a lot of motor vloggers when they've got a camera on the side of the helmet. And that's not something I particularly like myself, so I get rid of that. So yeah, picture quality um, on the Sony is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's pin sharp, um, plenty of detail in there. Uh, the dynamic range don't seem to be as much as a GoPro. And if you're not sure what dynamic range is, uh, if you're either new to motor vlogging or you're not um, quite tech savvy sort of thing uh, dynamic range is how much how many highlights and uh, details in the shadows you can actually see so for example uh, the car in front of me uh, with my eyes i can see past the shadows underneath the car and still see a little bit of the road and with the sky i can still see all the details in the sky the fact that it's blue and clouds etc uh, cameras with not so great dynamic uh, can't even say that word dynamic range uh, struggle slightly with this um, what they may do is the sky may be way too white or the shadows may be made too uh, maybe too black and that's because the dynamic range isn't really there in the camera um, a camera with a lot of dynamic range uh, for example Nikon cameras when you take a photo it retains a lot of the details in the sky and in the shadow so you can kind of clearly see both similar to what your eyes are like so anyway, back to the camera. Uh, the dynamic range is good, um, but in certain situations I don't think it is as good as the GoPro. Uh, maybe because it exposes slightly different, I'm not sure. Uh, battery life, and again comparing it to the GoPro, um, both the GoPro and the Sony are nothing like the Drift at all. The Drift, you, you can sometimes get a couple of hours if you're lucky, or if, even a few hours if you've got a new battery. Uh, the Sony shooting at 4K, I get about an hour, um, maybe an hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes, something like that. Uh, the GoPro shooting at 2.7K, I get about the same. Shooting at 1080p, I get about two hours out of the Sony. I get about an hour and a half out of the GoPro. Sound quality, um, as far as standing still, holding the camera, recording, uh, speaking in front of it, using the built-in mic, the Sony's mic is absolutely brilliant. Um, a lot better than the GoPro or any other camera I've used. It's got a stereo mic. Um, the one thing I do not like about the mic uh, that's built in is the fact that the mic's in front of the camera, um, so it's underneath the lens, which I can understand if you're recording it handheld or you obviously want to record the sounds in front of you. But the way that the camera's designed as an action camera, the mic should be behind it. It has a built-in wind noise reduction feature, which all I think it does is drops off the bass just a little bit, um, because it really doesn't make much difference when riding. Um, so now I am doing 20 mile an hour or 21 mile an hour and what I'll do, I'll switch to the Sony camera instead of the zoom mic. See with that you should have been able to hear quite a bit of wind noise um, and that was just going just over 20 mile an hour. So yeah, as far as the inbuilt mic goes, it is not the greatest when it comes to using it on your helmet without a mic plugged in or without using an external recorder like I'm using now, I'm using the Zoom H2n. Uh, the camera also has a 3.5mm um, microphone jack point, um, uh, so you can obviously you can plug your, plug your mic in or whichever mic that you decide to use. I put it into your helmet and obviously get a, a little bit better audio than what you would get if you was using the camera alone and be able to record your voice. Uh, the downside to this for me is I find that the X1000V records way too loud. It records everything at its maximum peak um, as loud as it can possibly get it without it uh, going over that threshold. And I don't like that. It makes everything way too loud, way too sensitive, regardless of what mic you use. 
it should be more like the drift uh, where you can ha actually have a mic adjustment uh, a level adjustment uh, being able to adjust the microphone level up and down as you see fit but it doesn't have that so therefore everything's recorded quite loud that's why i decided for motor vlogs i'm going to start using a zoom h2n or just an external recorder again pretty much all the time because that way i can get the best possible audio that i can deliver rather than what the camera decides is best so distortion wise um the sony distorts a hell of a lot compared to any other brand that i've ever used and in this next clip i am going to come out of the edited version that i've done and show you the distortion now so as you can see looking left and right uh, the edges really do distort a fair bit and uh, so hang on, i'm going to go back to my edited version as you can see with the edited version, um, I have removed a little bit of the distortion, but I've only removed it enough to crop out the helmet in the in the picture. Because again, I mentioned earlier that I uh, I'm not too keen on that. So yeah, the distortion factor of the uh, of the lens it does distort a hell of a lot, um, especially when you're moving from left to right or panning. Um, you do you do see the distortion, but if you're shooting in 4K, you can. Uh, correct that to you can correct that 100% so there is no fisheye distortion at all so it looks like a completely ordinary lens and then export at 1080p um, and then it doesn't even look like you've used an action camera which is the main reason I like shooting on 4k now for motor vlogs and um, the quality that goes up as 4k is about 75% of what the actual 4k quality is and that's because I do correct a little bit of the distortion um, it's got Wi-Fi and GPS built into it. Uh, Wi-Fi is absolutely brilliant, a hell of a lot more reliable than GoPro and a lot more reliable than any other brand that I've used and I've been fortunate enough to own quite a few different brands. Uh, the one big feature that you've got with the Wi-Fi is if you've got multiple Sony cameras, which some people will do, you can control up to four cameras from your phone or well, from your smartphone or tablet and you can view all four independently. Uh, make change settings independently start and stop recording independently and that's uh, so if you're on your bike and you've got the wi-fi remote for example um, on your wrist you can connect four different cameras on there and look at each one of their videos actually i believe it might be more than four for the remote but um actually on your smartphone or tablet you can look at four and four different screens and it streams instantly there's no lag there is nothing at all no lag at all in the video and the battery life is not as affected as much as the gopro or the drift for example is um, say for example i get an hour and a half's recording with the sony um, with the wi-fi on and it being used and it's streaming constantly I'll probably get about an hour and 10 minutes, maybe an hour and 15, so it doesn't really drop as much as the GoPro or the Drift. So another thing as well, uh, low light quality on this camera. Um, you do lose a fair bit of detail in low light, but I believe it's one of the best low light cameras that I have used as far as action cameras go. It's better because I, I just like the look that it gives. I believe it gives better, better colours than other cameras. Uh, in fact, somewhere on the screen, probably just up top left or wherever, I will put a little video, uh, well, picture of a video. You click that and you can check it out and it will show you the difference between the Hero 4 Silver and the Sony X1000V. Um, I know the Hero 4 Black is obviously the best that GoPro offer at the moment, but the sensor is exactly the same in the 4 Silver as it is the 4 Black, and the low light quality is exactly the same. Um, I shot both cameras on 24 frames a second, which lets the maximum amount of light into the camera before it has to boost the ISO. Uh, there is a little bit more grain in the Sony because it slightly overexposes everything, um, but that I don't really mind because I can see things a lot more clearer. I think if I was doing a professional production, uh, if I was shooting a wedding and I needed an action camera to capture certain bits that I couldn't get with my DSLRs, then I think I'd still prefer the GoPro just because it has the Pro Tune setting where I can actually match the footage a lot better um, to my DSLR than I can anything else. Um, the Sony has uh, two colour modes, it has Vivid and it has Neutral, uh, not Neutral, it has Natural. Natural, it makes things very dull, uh, makes the blacks not so black and the whites not so white, it doesn't crunch everything as much, which gives you a little bit more flexibility when editing, so you can add the blacks in or the whites in however you see fit. 
Um, this again is still not as good as GoPro because GoPro's um, flat color mode is fantastic. You can match it to absolutely any camera so you can make them both look like they came from the same camera. Uh, the vivid mode on Sony is also brilliant. Um, if you are not so fussed about um, editing or changing the picture quality etc etc um, then just use vivid mode you don't have to change anything there's plenty of contrast in there you lose quite a bit of detail in the sky and in the shadows but most people add contrast into the videos anyway so yeah the vivid mode is brilliant um, the one thing that Sony does have that no other action camera has got only Sony seems to have this is steady shot uh, you can't use this in 4k but you can use it in 1080p and what it does it records in 4k um, it digitally stabilizes the video and then it puts it into a 1080p file so you still get the full 1080p quality in the in the stabilized footage and the downside slight downside to it you don't get the ultra wide it crops in a little bit which is you know fair enough but the stabilized footage is brilliant saying it's handheld um it looks a little bit weird when you're on the bike and you're on the helmet because um, if you've got a little bit of your helmet in the shot then you see that jiggling around as the footage stabilizes because it stabilizes from the center outwards but all in all um it is one of the best cameras that I have used for motor vlogging and I've used quite a, quite a few different ones. It's got plenty of options in there, uh, but again, it's far from perfect, like all cameras. Um, every camera's got a couple of downsides. So for me, the downside of this, the biggest downside is the mic adjustment. You cannot adjust the mic or how sensitive the microphone is when you've got one plugged in, which is something you really do need as a motor vlogger um, it should be exactly like the drift where you can knock it down a level and it records all the audio perfect so for me that's the that's the biggest thing um, I'd really like really really like or in fact I could actually do with needing um, the adjustment like that secondly is a couple of the recording modes um, it records in all the standard definition then it records in 1080p all the frame rates that you could do it but then it jumps from 1080p to 4k um, if I wanted to record great 1080p videos but still correct the distortion I only need a maximum of 2.7k so that's something I'll, I would like to see in, in a future update is the ability to record in 2.7k and, and to be able to rec uh, adjust the microphone levels Apart from that, it seems to be a pretty perfect package um, as far as motor vlogging goes and even if you want one for a handheld camera, I think uh, as far as handheld goes you get a lot more features uh, with this than you do with GoPro. I do prefer the GoPro shape. Um, but for reasons I've mentioned before, just for practicality for motor vlogging, I don't think you can beat having a camera on the side of your helmet. Um, it just seems to not get in the way as much as, as the GoPro does on my chin and the fact that I use a modular helmet. If I had a full face helmet all the time and it wasn't a modular, then I'm not sure I would have gone with the Sony. I would have stuck with GoPro and left it on my chin because then I would have fully modified the case to, to make the case fully waterproof still with a mic attached. But I don't, so for me, this is the best option. Anyway, you're gonna have to let me know what you think to previous videos with the GoPro. I just thought I'd get this up there for you just in case you are a motor vlogger and you're looking to either get a better camera or upgrade an older camera you currently have. Um, this is fantastic, it's splash proof out of the box so you don't need to have the case on to use it in the rain, you just can't obviously go underwater with it. Um, features on it are, are decent for what it is, it is lacking a few bits, uh, but then again all brands are lacking a few bits here or there in one area or another. So anyway that's me done. Don't forget if you did like the video to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. If you want to see any more of the videos, click channel and click videos and they're all there. Right, take care all, have a good day and ride safe.